This is a piece of strange, very hard wood. I don't even know what it's called. It starts with an M, like Makakapa or something. I think it's from Africa. It's going to uh, be the material that the claws are made out of. Like it's really hard. I chose it because it's kind of orange, reddish, craw color, but also it's like some of the hardest wood that I have. So hopefully it does not destroy my tools. I don't mean to be disgusting, but this wood smells like dog poop when you cut it. That is not an over-exaggeration. It does not smell good in here right now. Chip is even coming up here and like, what is that smell? He doesn't understand. He thinks he pooped on the floor. Wow, was not expecting that. I can feel this wood scream no to the bandsaw blade as it's being cut as well. It really doesn't want to be cut. It's a very hard wood. This is going to be one piece connected at one point at the bottom towards the back of the crankbait. The claws are going to V out like that. This thing's heavy. I think this was a good choice of wood. Pretty good start. Scraggly randomness. Gotta keep that going, you know? We're getting somewhere. Be a decent spot to put some beady eyeballs. Got a little bit more carving to do. We're gonna be able to seal this wood soon. I guess I have to add weight. And I always get ahead of myself. Never mind. We're not even close. <laughs> I'm gonna need some coffee. 12 millimeter.
14. We're packing the lead in there. We don't have a lot of space. The goal is gonna be for that to be enough lead that this end is just constantly down. I just don't wanna put any more up here. I want it to be like this, not flat at all, just straight up and down. That could get it to sink slow. We'll see. Lead's hot. Feels pretty heavy. That is a long drill bit. I feel air, it's just not connected straight. Oh, I see my drill bit. I can see it, it's just off by like an eighth of an inch. I can see my wire in there, I just need to get it down. There we go. Through wire, so we'll have the line tie up here. I'm gonna bend this down and it's gonna have that rivet I showed and it's gonna hold the claws on and that's gonna be pretty strong. That way the claws will just kind of be on there and not carrying the load of a fish or anything. They'll just have to support themselves. There'll be a treble hook under them. I don't know, I think that's the most ideal way I could do this. Okay, I don't wanna bend everything yet. I'll have to get it to this point where the wire's going through and then bend this end, that'll lock everything on and then it'll be able to seat all the way onto the bait. I don't know how the heck I'm gonna test this before I do that, because I don't want this on when I paint the bait, and I don't wanna bend this wire up a thousand times, and I have to tie off a line tie on this end really neatly. Oh man. So this is gonna be a bunch of guesswork, and I can't even test the bait properly. Even the action of this bait's gonna be guesswork. I went with the five minute epoxy. That way I can recarve those details into that body a little easier than super glue bake. So, sorry fellas, I know. Always subverting the channel tradition. That recarving went pretty smooth. Looks good. Feels heavy back there. We're gonna dip straight into the triple stick. I've never tried this stuff on raw wood, actually, which is kind of strange. Should soak in a bit and then leave a pretty thick coat at the same time. That is thick. That looks like it's covered in jelly. See how that turns out. Starting with white. This thing's covered in carvings. I will be painting on some details, but it's it's got detail. It looks really good being all glossy now. Really throws off the crustacean vibe. That was one coat of the triple thick, by the way. And just, goodness, that's a good finish for just being one coat. I recommend the triple thick. These things are lighter on the belly than they are on the top. Whenever I'm painting a crawdad, I always resort back to this picture. With that red on the top, it's got blue claws, but you can see the sapia down the sides a little bit. You can't see the whole thing, but there's a full picture version of this thing. That's a little better. Probably not so much red. Man, that's a good picture too. Stuff like that. A lot more sapia. There's even some green. 
A lot of ways to go about painting a crawdad. Very intentionally place some detail burnt orange. This orange just goes brown if you spray too much. So it's got a lot of depth and you can tell. There's some depth there. I'm gonna stay away from red. I like this look. If I went all the way to wicked red oxide, it would just be straight red and I don't want that. I like this look. I know. Let's put some blue fading in and out of the white and sapia. Have I been saying sapia? I meant sienna. This is raw sienna. I've probably been saying sapia the whole time. I should probably just stop talking and show you the paint when it's done. <laughs> I put blue in spots and it looks good. It's the best way to put it. I'm gonna redo that belly a little bit because there's too much blue on it. Maybe some silver even. We're kind of getting there. The silver's on. I'm going back over with raw sienna. I think that's it. There's more color on my bait than on that craw, but the transition's very nice. Light bottom, still has all the colors and blues and everything. Okay, details, let's do the detail. So that was just white. And don't worry, we're not leaving it there. But it put texture everywhere. A kind of texture where your mind can't make much sense of it. It's just going to give it the illusion that fine little details are everywhere. But now we're going to come back in with the same stencil with raw sienna. And then kind of blend raw sienna over the whole thing after that as well. So Just ruthless with the detail. Okay. No further than that. That's very crawdad-like. Uh, I'm really debating if I should do that little detail with the red back there on those things. I probably should. It's gonna make or break this bait, but I'll do it. This feels so dangerous. Gotta keep it really liquidy and just let it run. Good thing I have achieved the correct consistency here. And just give it a brush full. Okay, very distinct detail. It's probably gonna look a lot better with clear coat over it. Kind of buff it in there, you know? Quite overwhelming right now, but it, it should look better. And really, it looks fine. Eyeballs. It's gonna look pretty sweet. A little bit of highlight red and sparkly laser glitter in the clear coat. I could not help myself. I had to tip those claws with some blue. I don't know if I showed that or not. Okay, that should stay. A rivet on that side and a rivet on the other. So it's fully suspended by metal to metal contact. There shouldn't be metal wearing away at wood. We'll be able to say the same for where the wire goes into the body. A rivet's going right there too. If my fat fingers can get that in there.
All right, now I just need to tie that off cleanly, and we have a finished bait. All right, I'm just gonna wrap that until it comes all the way down to that rivet, because I want stuff tight. I don't want these claws to be able to pull out that way at all. They need to be held tight to the body. That way they hit their stop where they should, you know? Keep it tight. Half of a churn left. There. I'm gonna take that little edge to the sander. So that's through wire. That should be pretty strong. If we do hook a fish, it is a wire to wire connection. Let's get a treble on there. Time to answer the ultimate bait making question. What does it do? This is my first time seeing as well. Genuine reaction. It could be nothing, so. Dude, it's a perfect suspender. Dude, dude, I did not even test for that. It's a perfect suspender and it cranks. What the heck? It's perfect. It's a slow sink. It's a very, very slow sink. I could put a lighter hook on this and it would be a perfect suspender. Let's do that, because that's kind of what I would prefer. Dude, we lucked out. I said dude like 20 times while testing this for like 12 seconds. We're good, dude. So yeah, I was using a really heavy wire. Let's see how much this weighs. 0.1 ounce. Okay, maybe I can get away with this hook. It's 0.05. Yeah, that's not too off base. That's still a pretty big hook. I think it's a size one. Yeah, now it's a very slow float. That is perfect. We'll be able to crank it down a little bit. Now let's try the other one. <laughs> let's try the 0 0.09 ounce hook. That floats too hard now. I want it to stay in the strike zone. I'll feel more assured with a larger hook if I do hook a pike as well, so. And I'm going to be fishing in much colder water, which is denser water, which things float easier. But that's just the perfect suspender, really. That's staying right in the middle. Like sinking one inch per second, maybe. It's got the wobble. It's so good. I'll be able to pause it with confidence. A lot. It's gonna work. Let's go catch a pike. It's going incredibly well. Confidence extremely high. I know my bait works really good. Even for cold water situations like this, I can pause it, it's suspending, it stays there, it's in the strike zone, it's about to get struck, it's gonna get struck, and then this happened. You know, you, you always start out slow in situations like these, give it some little taps. Usually they pop out with a little 
what do you say, finesse. I didn't drive it into anything too hard. I was fishing this thing so slow, just creeping along. I think the problem was that this place I was fishing had this like liner on the banks that help, that holds sediment down. And I just dug a treble hook without much pressure at all, like way into that liner. This is kind of bad. 80 pound braid and an 80 pound fluorocarbon leader that I took my time tying, so there's like no getting it off. So it took quite the yanking to break that off, but it broke Damn. off and it's gone. I think I cut the braid on a rock. It's just gone. That was just a sniffle, I wasn't crying. There's probably some people watching this that know where this is. And my lure is right there. It's not too far off the bank. Man, I was asking for that though. There's a, there's a diving lure that slowly sank, very slowly. I don't know why, that one stings a little bit extra. I really liked that bait. So, this is a thing that happens on the channel. It's always a little awkward when it does, but thank goodness I have Chip to console me. I need to, I need to trim your claws, dude. Woo, oh boy. Oh, what a scratch. Thanks for the consoling, Chip. That's better. That just makes me want to make a reproducible Maybe soft plastic, maybe resin, I don't know. It makes me want to make a bait that I can make multiples of for the next time. Anyway, video's over. I just have to accept it. Video's over. On to the next bait. By the way, wanted to mention these shirts are available. Those are pretty much all the words that I speak. Just a bunch of repetitive sayings. Summarized into just that. I'll have a link directly to these in the description below. Oh, and the most important one. On to the next bait. Maka kappa. He thinks he pooped on the floor. Uh, gotta keep it really liquidy and just let it run. Just ruthless. Into the triple set.